You're listening to Not So Live from Asteroid G. I'm Mike Finkelstein. With me, as always, is... Josh Schaefer. Wow, after like months and months of not doing this, that felt really just forced. A little natural. Feels weird. Oh, okay. Like I get it tingly. <laughs> Today we are going to be talking for this inaugural thing of the fifth season as we put change around with our formats again. We're going to be talking about the MCU, but we're going to talk about it in three parts because we're going to start doing these podcasts in three parts. Three. And we're going to open with nerd news to start. And so there's a couple different things we can discuss right now. And the first thing as far as MCU news at this point is concerned would be the fact that Doctor Strange came out, did okay, and it's kind of faded away and no one really seems to care about anymore. Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I, I have not. I mean, it's going to be on Disney Plus in like another month. Why Why go to the theater for it? I mean, this gets back to our whole issue of why go to the theater at all. I know. The experience isn't so experiencing anymore. No, when you have like a 60-inch TV at your home, really nice couches, you can make your own popcorn, and you just sit there on the couch, and if someone like needs a bathroom break or something, you don't miss the movie, but your home theater is as good as the real theater, why go see Doctor Strange? Yeah. I can't think of a reason. No, and that's my problem. It's like, okay, my TV could be bigger. That's about the only thing I could do that would be make it, but it's still pretty damn big. Yeah. And Doctor Strange is Doctor Strange. He's like, not Iron Man. I like Doctor Strange, but it's just He's no Iron Man. I know. I still haven't forgiven Sam Raimi for Spider Man three, so <laughs> I'll just come out and say it. I mean Okay, I guess. But I do I really need to forgive him for Spider Man three when there's the quick and the dead? Yes. Oh, well, apparently I do. I'm so sorry. Sam Raimi, I'm sorry. I just, apparently I have to hold this against you now. I think he did apologize, though, so maybe, maybe <laughs> he, it's up to me to he, forgive and he forget. He didn't apologize. He blamed Sony for Spider-Man 3. Which I can believe because yeah. it's Sony. Yeah. But, no, I mean, it's Doctor Strange. He is not one of the top-tier characters for me, even after his portrayal by a very fine Benedict Cumberbatch in the first movie. It's not interesting as much. Uh, I, He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. I like him a lot, but He's fine. I feel like someone that powerful could do more yeah, to well, just end stuff or yeah. would have like better thought processes and logic. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing. Like he's being positioned as the next Iron Man for the for the whole yeah. of the DC, the DC, but for the whole of the MCU. I mean, DC could probably no, use him. Say, yeah. DC could probably use him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's Doctor Fate? Yeah, but he's being positioned as the the guy that fills that Iron Man role. Mm -hmm. The mentor. While he has the personality, he's not good enough for it. No, No. Spider-Man should be their second-gen Iron Man, not Doctor Strange. They already wrote that out of the story. I know, I know. We'll get to that. that. Slow your roll. (laughs) See, we take take like five months off and suddenly Josh is jumping ahead here. I'm sorry. (laughs) I finished the MCU stuff. Our loyal listener. Woo! I know. <laughs> that one guy. The one guy. One guy's out there. No, he but. He knows. I, <laughs> I finally watched them all. Yeah, but it's it's this thing of, and I can see why it's not doing as well as Spider-Man, because Doctor Strange is not Spider-Man. Now, the Spider-Man movie we got, which we'll touch upon, is like a big cross-generation Sony love fest, and the Spider-Man movies are Way better beloved, I think, than even a lot of the stuff that the MCU has put out. The MCU is great, yeah, but they're not Spider-Man. No, Spider-Man is. I, don't know, I think it holds. I think almost everybody can mm-hmm. identify with a mm-hmm. part of the Spider-Man mythos. Yeah. Now, I mean, there's there's ways that MCU could build their own version of that. That's yeah. just their own characters. If they had like a new Iron Man, they did, and then they mm-hmm. did a similar movie where Iron Man's of the past came back and did stuff. I don't know if there's ever been enough. Has, did Iron Man even show up in like the Fantastic, or not Fantastic, the uh, Incredible Hulk. I know Thor did. I don't recall. Yeah, so, okay, let's say that, like, ten years from now, they do another Thor movie. Yeah. And they're like, let's bring all the Thors back. So they bring back the 70s Thor, and Chris Hemsworth's Thor, and Lady Thor at that point. And they do a cross-Thor thing. Maybe that could work. I don't think yeah. it's it's Thor. I don't think it's going to work as well as, like, an Iron Man. But if you could do the same for Iron Man, sure. But there aren't a lot of characters that are as, like, big as Spider-Man. No, uh, especially in the MCU. I think mm-hmm. you have a lot of popular characters, mm-hmm. but I think Marvel has, I don't want to say one iconic character, but one iconic character. Yeah, there, there's only one character. This is 
true fact, only one character that Marvel owns that stands at the same level of Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, and that's Spider Man. Yeah, absolutely. There's a reason why when they did crossovers back in the 80s and 90s, it was Spider Man meeting Superman. Mm -hmm. That's what people want to see. Yeah, and (laughs) Spider Man. I mean, Batman is worldwide. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Superman's mostly worldwide, but yeah. I mean, Captain America is probably, I would say, their next flagship character. And he's he was not he's, good enough for most studios to buy back in the day. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's Captain America, like yeah, yeah. He, he's he caters to a very specific country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not sure which one. No, no, but one of them, Canada. Captain oh. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Those Canucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot help you s- help save you right now. I must go play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Socialist healthcare wins again. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Thanks, libtards. <laughs> but no, so I can like Benedict Cumberbatch said my movie's gonna be as big as Spider Man. I think that was that was that was a little much wishful there. Thinking. Yeah, wishful thinking right there. I mean, it did good money. Yeah. It's definitely going to do better than a lot of the COVID movies. It's probably going to break a billion at the, by the time it's done in all international oh, markets, sure. everything else. But like, as far as like expecting it to be the next huge tentpole, maybe not so much. No, and I think it. A lot of it was riding on nostalgia too, mm-hmm. because it doesn't ruin anything because these are in the trailers. Mm-hmm. But you know, like Professor X shows up. Oh yeah, I mean, if you you so. hear his voice in there, yeah. Yeah. They show up and he shows up in the third trailer like mm-hmm. his face. Mm-hmm. His old wrinkly face. His old wrinkly face. Oh my god. Patrick Stewart. I love you, Patrick Stewart, but stop living off the legacy of your characters at this point. Just go retire if you're gonna retire. Like Be happy. Go to yeah. France. Open yeah. up a vineyard. Yeah. <laughs> but don't but don't actually make but another Picard. That that show's so bad. Don't go find data. Just no. <laughs> stay in France. In the stay in the vineyard. Just be in the vineyard. We'd like to see that. Uh speaking of legacy. Okay, I, actually, that's a terrible segue because it doesn't in any way, shape, or form mit, match up. What I was really going to say was, as far as movies that actually might be able to compete with Spider-Man at anywhere close to that global level at this point, for Thor. Yeah. Thor, Love, and Thunder. Yeah. I think because everyone really loved Ragnarok. And that Ragnarok one did, is definitely top five. Yeah, and that one did really well, and they got the whole team back together, and they're promoing the right things, like Lady Thor. Mm-hmm. Like... Okay, I know How did she's. Natalie Portman back. I thought she was like, I'll never do a Marvel because movie. they offered her the chance to be Thor. That's you what it so? is. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, I call her Lady Thor, but she's just yeah, as far Thor. as the comics are concerned, she's just Thor. Thor. Whoever holds the hammer is Thor. Yeah. Yeah. He's got she the got name. Ripped too. Yeah. She is Thor. Well, I heard she had a huge training regimen yeah. for this. Yeah. She is Thor. Um, but they're doing all the right things to advertise. They brought the team back. They got the director back. It looks like it's going to be very funny. Yeah. Like. I think that's a movie that could actually stand against Spider-Man as far as like actually doing well. I honestly think you were talking about Benedict Cumberbatch uh-huh. saying Doctor Strange is going to be better, the next Spider-Man or uh-huh. do Spider-Man numbers. I think if Marvel and Disney were smart, they would look to Thor because yeah, old Chris over there, I don't think <laughs> wants to put his hammer up anytime soon. No, he seems per- he's the only actor. That is not once mentioned. I want to retire. No, no. I think didn't he say at one point something along the lines of "I'll be Thor forever"? Yeah, I mean, as long as they let him, he's he. They let him do any version of the character he wants. He was Fat Thor for a while, and he's like, "This Thor. is great." I love Fat Thor. <laughs> and plus, uh, I can never say his name right. Taika Waititi. Yeah, it? something like that. I'm. Uh, I don't even bother trying. It's it's amazing to me how you can make a vampire mockumentary to become one of the best MCU directors. <laughs> I know. Which no, like no, I love yeah, yeah, it's all a great movie. Movies. Yeah, it's great. I love all of his movies that I've seen so far. Mm-hmm. So, I I think they have the right tent poles. I think putting a lot of that emphasis on Doctor Strange, as much as Doctor Strange helped to expand the multiverse more. Yes. but he's a bad character for it. Like, if you watch the Spider-Man movie, he blames Spider-Man for all, like, the whole multiverse tearing and everything. Which was his fault, because he's the... His fault! He was the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah! He was the one that knew the spell. Yeah! And he's talking to an 18-year-old boy. Yeah! Like, I was 18, I was dumb. Yeah! I would say just blanket statements and be like, oh, wait, I forgot about these 10 people that are very important to me. Like, Yeah, he didn't tell Spider-Man it was going to be a blanket statement. He, uh, like... He didn't ask any questions about exactly what he needed to do. He was just like, everyone forgets. And like, but wait. 
Do you think you guys could have talked about this 12 minutes before you started casting a yeah. spell? Could, could we take five minutes to maybe write down some notes first? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all the whole movie is Doctor Strange's fault, but Spider Man takes all the blame. Yeah. It's not really fair. Yeah. And I'm. Well, I mean, we're getting ahead because we're actually going yeah. to talk about the movie, but, but it's Doctor Strange we're talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thor's but... the better choice. Yes, I agree. And I love and I love Doctor Strange. He's one of my personal favorites, but I think they're just replacing cuz mm-hmm. Tony Stark kind of, you know, a slight narcissist, mm-hmm. egomaniac. Yeah. Doctor Strange is a slight narcissist, egomaniac. Uh-huh. So it's you're oh, replacing yeah. a character with a character and I think it would be nice to see someone with a little bit more depth or heart. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, the problem. I think yeah. they're just they're just replacing one guy with his basic m- mi- magical mirror counterpart. Yeah, personally, have... Wong would be my choice. Yeah, Wong I would. Good. I love Wong though. He's it's my favorite. Just character. A Wong, like no, don't no, don't call Doctor Strange. Don't call Sorcerer just Supreme. Call just Wong. MCU presents Wong. I would love a movie <laughs> just with Wong <laughs> doing because you know he's super powerful because he's yeah. a new Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah, so you know he has the chops, and I. You know, I'm saying all this without knowing exactly what happens in the new Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, that's fine. But I want to see a solo Wong movie, or even better, a mini series. Well, they have a lot of solo mini series they're doing. Um, and this is this gets my next problem of what the MCU really is, and we can kind of use this as a bridging point into our greater overview of this because the MCU right now feels fractured and i mean when, a bit. when the mcu started it was absolutely fractured because it was just superheroes doing superhero things and then at some point they came together because of thanos it, and the thanos thing was like in the background and just kind of operating but i think disney kind of looked into the mm-hmm, mm-hmm. universe honestly yeah they he grew as a big bad and from like midpoint of of like phase two onwards mm-hmm. it was building to Thanos and yes. we had something we were building to uh, this fourth phase goes back to feeling very fractured. And I think that's a misstep for a number of reasons, but two of them are one, because it feels like it's still trying to build to something, which is the multiverse. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's also not building towards it. Cause then you have stuff like Hawkeye. That's in no way related. Captain Fal Captain Falcon, Captain Falcon, Falcon, <laughs> Falcon and uh, winter soldier. That's unrelated. Good um, night. Moon Knight, that's so unrelated, you don't even have to watch it. Yeah. Like, that's a problem right there. Um, it, it was good, though. It was watchable, but it in no way, shape, or form ties into anything. So unless any of those characters come back, which right now it's looking like they won't. Yeah, because Oscar Isaac said that there's no plans. There's for no him. plan. Yeah. Like, so what's the But well, that makes point? me kind of think that there is a plan and it's just misdirection. Maybe. We just need a Tom Holland-esque type person to ruin it for me so I won't have to ask myself these questions. But right now, until like Moon Knight shows up or the other character that comes in his show, whatever her name was, she's got a special... special, Scarlet something or other. Whatever her name is. Scarlet Scarab? It's probably wrong. I don't think that's right, but... It's probably wrong. We'll call her that for It was racist, but whatever. Um... (laughs) Not racist. Well, that's a little racist. I'm just I'm blanket statementing all Egyptians. The only superhero you can have is a scarab. And if it's oh, I see. Yeah, and if I'm not wrong, and she actually is a scarab, that's her name. Then that's the MCU being racist. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> but um, so we've got a lot of fractured stories. We got She Hulk that's coming out, which looks great. We've got uh, Ms. Marvel that's coming out, which, which looks great. Looks, it looks cute. I like. But I none of them look like they tie into the multiverse. So what's the plan? Is it just random superheroes doing random bullshit, or is the multiverse what we're actually supposed to worry about? And there's going to be a big threat because if there's going to be a big threat in the multiverse. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck are we focusing so much time on things that don't matter? I'm wondering if how many of these are in the same universe, too. You know, like <sighs> that's a is, pain. Yeah, did Moon Knight actually happen in the MCU universe? Did I mean like Hawkeye? I assume did, um, but well, yeah, Hawkeye kind of has to because that's of how deeply it ties into back lore. And don't get me wrong. The ones that tie into the back lore are fun. Are the ones yeah. I enjoyed the best. I actually really liked Hawkeye. It was low level yeah, street awesome. bullshit yeah. that kind of felt like the old Netflix shows, but done right. Yeah, and, it uh, was fun. Speaking of the Netflix show, they're making a new Daredevil. They are. That was the nerd news that I totally was going to mention. Totally failed to because we're we're in a different part now. <laughs> as yeah. as we feel out this format, <laughs> but Daredevil. I mean, I love Daredevil, too. Yeah, and I like the fact that the MCU is tying in some of these shows via their multiverse. The Netflix shows exist somewhere. The X-Men exists somewhere. The 
Spider-Man movies exist somewhere, and that's fine. In humans. <laughs> kind of existed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was mad about that one. <laughs> in humans, and they ruined it. And now we're never going to get Inhumans in the MCU again. No, I know. I know that he, that something shows up in Doctor Strange. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. I, I know I don't that spoil happens. Anything. But that's in a different pocket universe. Yes. And and I say we're not going to get Inhumans in the in the the MCU main anymore because Ms. Marvel is supposed to be a, an Inhuman and she's not. Yes. Yes. So, but this ties back to my big question of: Is the multiverse what we're supposed to be focusing on? If so. What's up with all these random things that don't tie in? And if they definitely don't tie in, how much of it is actually something I need to invest in? Because we're getting, we used to get three superheroes a year. We're now getting something on the order of 10. Yeah. With all the DC, or DC. I keep wanting to talk about DC. That's a different thing. Uh, With all the MCU shows that keep showing up, along with the MCU movies, of which they had a backlog glut, so they're releasing like five this fucking year. It's a lot. It is a lot. I think think they're going to do a House of M sort of thing, so... Hmm. Um, for those of you that don't know, one of the big Marvel events about a decade, decade and a half ago was House of M where the Scarlet Witch, um, in her infinite powers decided that mutants no longer existed. And I have a, wasn't her exact statement, no more mutants. Yeah. No more mutants. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have a feeling that based off of like WandaVision and just kind of the Mm -hmm. path her character is going, something like that is going to happen where it might not necessarily be no more mutants but maybe no more superheroes or something's going to happen where she's going to will something into existence. Yeah, I don't know the exact details. I haven't watched this Doctor Strange as we established, so I don't know what happens to her. I know just by sheer spoilers, and you can get it just from watching the trailer alone. Yeah. She's going to be the villain of the movie. Yes. So something happens, and whether she she's causes some cataclysm now or she's going to cause a cataclysm at the end of phase four there's no plans for an avengers movie in the works so whatever happens which i didn't think they were going to call it avengers i always assumed the next avengers movie was going to be the ultimates or something yeah so west coast avengers <laughs> can, can we get that and then can they cross over with the the great lakes um <laughs> justice yes. league or whatever justice league Graceful, international <laughs> justice league international and great lakes avengers <laughs> starring deadpool <laughs> deadpool and blue beetle <laughs> i would watch that <laughs> Watch I would that. watch that. <laughs> but, oh, uh, Beetle. Anyway, um, so yeah, like there are parts of the multiverse I dig. I liked Loki. Yeah, I Loki was cool. Building there was cool. Yeah. I like how lo- just Loki's sheer thing helps to make certain things possible within the MCU. I worry not only because there's so much going on that doesn't tie into it and whether or not people care, mm. but I worry that maybe there's too much ambition on the plate as well. I think so. I, I think, because I mean, at the end of the day, Disney slash Marvel are both corporations, part of the same corporation. And I think they're, I, I'm really hoping they don't view this, you know, with just like classic cartoon villain dollar signs in their eyes, you know? And oh, They so do. Well, I mean, they've, they've done that with Star Wars, you know, and I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but I like it enough. But I just feel like Marvel is tiptoeing closer to the kind of the the star wars problem of just we're just gonna throw yeah Yeah. oversaturation but just making stories where it's like we're just gonna put a whole bunch of fan service in here and not actually have any substance because you know that's that's what we need i I don't want to see another sequel trilogy you know yeah there's a problem of the fact that well, okay. So Marvel is Star Wars is not Marvel. I think at this point, Let, no, let's be clear. Yeah. Some of the Star Wars movies have made more money than some of the Marvel yes. movies, but Star Wars is not the cash cow that Marvel is. No. Now, the Star Wars shows do better than the Marvel shows. I think because yes. there's the, the there's that unified prospect. All the stuff that happens in Star Wars, as much as I hate it, all ties into the same overarching era. Yeah. Um, the Marvel shows, a lot of them feel disposable. But the Marvel movies still make massive money, and you can put three of them out a year where they couldn't even release one Star Wars every year and expect to make money off it because Solo. Yeah. And I think a lot of that's the fault of Solo, but the lesson Disney took is we can't do a Star Wars movie every year. We need to do Star Wars shows all the fucking time. Which, I kind of just wish Star Wars would go and tell a different story. Yeah. 
It, and so. I think that's what happened with the sequels was they didn't need like everything in the sequel trilogy didn't need to be told. Yeah. Uh, it didn't and, do anything. And, and it didn't do anything like did, they didn't need to raise Emperor Palpatine from the grave. They didn't no. need to have Ray Sky. Like some of the concepts were cool and and the trajectory of like the first movie you know, I think everyone was kind of hoping it would go in a different direction, but it just yeah. kind of went. It just did its thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, so I think we've hashed that out enough. Let's actually get to our watch party, which was what I think what the watch meat of party. what, what we were here for. And we almost tried to slide into it more than once, which was Sp- uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. We had the new one, the third movie in the MCU, Spider-Man Far- uh, No Way Home. Because they had to work home in, which I feel like that's kind of awkward that they did that. They did all three. On the well, line. yeah, but Far From Home and then No Way Home feels like they just slapped the same subtitle on them, which is a little, oh, I see, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so I get what they were going for. Um, but so this is, I think, probably the best Marvel movie we've gotten in some time. I can't think of a better one. I, like maybe Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok was close. Or at, Guardians, the first Guardians. First movie. Guardians. I really like the first Avengers. They're all sitting there at the top. Mm-hmm. But I think what works the best for me... So the movie is about Peter Parker deciding, as we alluded to earlier, that he doesn't like the fact that everyone knows his secret identity. So he asks Doctor Strange to one more day his life mm-hmm. and stop everyone from knowing who he is. And Doctor Strange being Doctor Strange tra- blusters right into it, doesn't ask any questions, and cast a spell that would wipe the memories of everyone Peter yep. Parker knows. Not just random strangers, but everyone. MJ and his aunt and everyone else. No Man. one would know that he's Spider-Man anymore. Um, which, that's one thing. Now, the movie ties itself up by... So, he does this, and then Spider-Man asks questions, and there's a spell that gets cast, but Doctor Strange flubs the spells because Peter Parker asks many questions, and the multiverse breaks, and then villains from all the various uh, Spider-Man movies that we'd seen before from Sony, not MCU, show up, so Green Mm -hmm. Goblin and Doc Ock and all that, and then Spider-Man has to battle all them, and in the process, find a way to patch the multiverse and send everyone back, and to do that, he gets help from the other two Spider-Man that have shown up. Uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Mm -hmm. and then to tie up the movie spoilers I'm I'm sorry it's been out for months you guys should have seen it already that's why we do the watch party so late Um, you not for us (laughs) Uh, you've read listen to the rest of the podcast you don't spoilers it's the time to stop Um, and then to tie it all up he has Doctor Strange cast the spell that wipes the memory of everyone ever knowing Peter Parker which wasn't the spell to begin with so that confuses me how that patches things the spell was just supposed to stop everyone from knowing Peter Parker was Spider-Man. Now suddenly it evolves to everyone has to forget I exist. Yes. Why? I feel like this is going to be a plot hole that is going to cause a lot of issues because if Peter Parker never existed, or like, people forget about Peter Parker, yeah. does he have a social security number? Yeah. Does he? Can he have a bank account? How is he going that. to school? How? Yeah. How does he do anything? Yeah. Like, does he have a fake identity? Is he yeah. Carlos Mencia? Like, yeah. It's like the, uh, clearly a pocket of Spider-Man existed yes. because nothing that Spider-Man did didn't happen, and everyone still yeah. remembers it. Everyone remembers Spider-Man, and everyone remembers that Aunt May had a Peter Parker. Yes, but they don't remember him. Yes. So I'm very confused how any does he get to still be Peter Parker? Does Peter Parker still exist? Like it's it's not just removing the fact that he was Spider-Man. They remove everything about him, yeah. which is completely different. The wording is really really strange. And I have this weird feeling that I have a weird feeling that there's going to be something in the next Spider-Man movie if there is one. If there which is there one. probably will be, but um I have a feeling that there's going to be Something baked in that Doctor Strange did where maybe Doctor Strange is the only one that remembers him and he's going to play dumb. Or there's going to be like some sort of a call to action where there's a um, and there's a way to make some people selectively me- remember him because... Like, I guess it old... just... It confuses me because they did all this to stop the fracturing of the universe and to cause the, stop the multiverse from invading. But... Then Doctor Strange goes gallivanting around the multiverse in the next movie, which I'm sure through different means, but still, again, what was the point? Yeah. And Loki accidentally helped the multiverse happen. So again, what was the point? What yeah. What was the point of the spell that Peter Parker cast specifically? Because it feels like that's really weird. I feel like there's a scene missing from the over... Like, 
I feel like there's some thinking missing that they didn't really think through. This this is yeah. a this is a story flaw. Because at first, because at first it was like a. Uh... You know, everyone who knows Peter Parker can't re- is Spider Man uh-huh. doesn't exist. Yeah, which I can see the logic step of them having other villains come into the universe, mm-hmm. but the closing it off part I don't understand because if everyone forgets he's Peter Parker, how does that reset everything? Yeah, like, it's a little weird. And at that point, like after Aunt May died and mm-hmm. all that, I feel like it's all irrelevant does kind of feel like it. The only thing he lost at this point, which is a big loss, is MJ. Yes. But, like, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, it, it's it's messy. That's that's it, that's the messy part of the plot line. At the same time, though, everything else about the movie works really well. And what I really like about the movie is that it's not just a sequel to the MCU Spider-Man, but it's a sequel to the other two Spider-Man franchises yes. as well. Like, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man gets closure that he never got in his own, like, two movies because yeah. he was supposed to get a trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Which sucks is I actually, I personally loved the first Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. The second one was awesome. Garbage. Yeah. It wasn't no fault of his. No, but... no, no, no. But there was a lot that happened there that his character didn't get to, like, work through. And so this movie gave him the time to work mm-hmm. through it. Like, it was actually kind of brilliant how they, like, tied up all the Spider-Man, not just the one. Yeah. Even Tobey Maguire had his moments, yeah. too. Which, yeah. I always, I'm indifferent about him, personally. He's fine. He's, he's fine. fine. He's a very moody Spider-Man, which is yeah. not how Spider-Man's supposed to be. Which which I think they fixed in this new one because he was kind of like the the dad he was, he mentor. Was, he was the joking dad Spider-Man. Yeah, like, and you can see, like, just like, I, I've never seen Tobey Maguire act as good as he did mm-hmm. ever in his career. He, well, he hasn't done a lot since... Spider-Man. Yeah. Did, really? Yeah. Yeah, he did some other movies, and then he just kind of tapered off for a while, and now he's, like, he did this, and it felt like he was just kind of relaxed and enjoying himself. Yeah, and yeah. He, he seemed low stress, and just like, a, you know, and he lent, he could lend an ear, and mm-hmm. I, I just felt like all three Spider-Men gave top-notch performances, so. There's one other thing. One other question that this raises is... So all the Spider-Man get their t- their story tied up, but all the villains somehow get fixed yep. before the moments of their death. So shouldn't that also imply that there's... They're still alive? That not only they're still alive, that there's other major multiverse issues going on in their universes now? Yes. I yeah. Was, I think that's what it's going to lead up to because this opens up the possibility of having these characters exist in the MCU too. So they're... There might be a new Doc Ock. Mm-hmm. There might be a Green Goblin. Like an inspired by sort of thing. But it, it does raise an issue for me of... And this gets to the, the Sony of the matter. MCU did this and did this well. If Sony had done this movie on their own, it would have been... Awful. S- so bad. Like Mobius. Terrible. Because, yeah, because, yeah, Morbius. Oh, Morbius. The, not Mobius. No, Morbius. Maybe his movie would be better. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the two Venom movies have been... Kind of I bad. liked them. I liked the first one. The second one was less. The first one was amusing but dumb. Like there was oh, nothing. It was a dumb popcorn movie. Yeah, it was a dumb popcorn movie. It was watchable, but it's not great. But the second one was just rushed and bad. Like having a. I just based on his name. Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson as Carnage was weird. Yeah, like uh, I, I, here I am, this fifty-five-year-old guy hanging out, acting like a teenager. Macking on a young woman who's yeah, like, like just cringy, and Shriek doesn't get to be a symbiote before she dies, which is weird. Yes, um, there's a lot that's just weird, and then of course Carnage dies, which is also weird. Like you inter- you, you 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 brought him in, you gave him a half an hour to do stuff, and then you killed him. That's my biggest issue, and I think I've said this before. If I could change one thing about the MCU as a whole, mm-hmm. stop killing your villains. Yeah, the only villain I think that is still alive is the Vulture and Loki. No, well, he's he's an anti-hero. <laughs> yeah, but you. still, he started as a kind of villain. Yeah, yeah. but like everyone else is is gone. Like Killmonger was a great villain. Yeah, done. So I think that's part of the reason why they're bringing in the multiverse is to bring back some of the guys that were actually yeah. good. Because yeah. there's so many way, so much wasted potential in the MCU. Mm-hmm. Because part of the reason why comic books work is because there's an ever-growing thread of evil because evil sometimes wins or it's hard to defeat and if you defeat it every time it just you have to you have to up it well the blame for all that really relies on the 1989 batman yes batman killed joker 
Every so now, yep. and because that was one of the biggest superhero movies ever, everyone expects that to tie up your movie. You have to kill the villain, yeah. so everyone does. Now, some movies avoid this. Batman didn't kill the Joker in the se- uh, in uh, the Dark Knight. Yeah, he did not. No, and they would have had the Joker back. Did they- Bane die? Bane did die. Okay. Bane died at the hands of Catwoman. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So Batman didn't kill him, at least. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bane died, and or, but Two Face never showed jo- up. He never jo- had a chance. Joker, Two Face died, so Two Face basically killed himself. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so they do kill some of the villains, but Joker didn't die. Sandman didn't die. Sandman, uh, Scarecrow yeah. didn't die. So there's some of them don't die, but some of them do, and that's that's still a trend that's hard to get away with because people just expect you're a bad guy, you have to die by the end of the film. Yeah. So, no, I mean, in the case of Killmonger, his story like was a good arc. Yeah. So his death at least felt earned, but it still wasn't necessary. Like in the long run, it it no. it stops us from ever being able to have him again. Yeah, which makes me feel like there's going to be, as you said, um, some sort of event or something that's going to happen where they're going to figure out a way to send people back from the multiverse to change mm-hmm. history. And I think the "what if" cartoon is kind of a tongue-in-cheek way of mm-hmm. maybe predicting that. Yep. So, but no, I mean, in general, I really like the Spider-Man movie. I yeah. mean, we haven't really talked that much about it, but it's it's not like it has a complex plot. No. It's villains show up, Spider-Man fights them until he saves them. Yeah. So. And I think if you didn't have the cast that they did, it mm-hmm. wouldn't have worked and Sony would have destroyed it. But there was a lot of emotional moments in there, a lot of mm-hmm. um, good, you know, like tongue in cheek meme things like when... Uh, Willem Dafoe goes, you know, I'm something of a scientist myself. <laughs> like, everyone laughed. Everyone laughs. Because it was hysterical. Because that's a meme. <laughs> obviously. But, uh, but I think, uh, um, and spoiler, killing Aunt May mm-hmm. also had like a really big impact as well. And, mm-hmm. um, just, she was the Uncle Ben. She was the Uncle Ben. Which is interesting because like... Uncle Ben is like no purpose in this trilogy of films. Like he he's not even in the first one. He's gone beforehand. So they just they they offhandedly talk about Aunt May's grief that she's been through a lot lately. Yeah. But I don't think they've ever specifically said they anything never about they never ben. named his name. No. Yeah. Or that he existed. Like no. It, so I, I'm curious to know if there is an Uncle Ben. Yeah. I mean, it's possible that the grief that she was working through could have been the death of Peter's parents. Yeah. Yeah. Which interesting. But which is weird though, because if memory serves, Uncle Ben was his blood uncle, who and Aunt May was not blood related to Spider Man. Well, I mean, serves. they could just rewrite that. Well, yeah, I mean, they they, they named they, they, MJ Michelle, so yeah, yeah, which I don't really care about. Yeah, you know. it's fine. So, all right. Well, do we have anything more about the MCU or Spider Man or whatever? Uh, we can talk about how Sony pushed back the second. Um, Spider Verse movie. That is true. That is that is related. Next year. Yeah. Well, I made it two movies. I don't know if I if I necessarily mind that so much though. I like know, I want to watch it so bad. No, I want to watch it. But I at love least Miles Morales. Working. Yeah, he's great. Favorite. He's great. Or one of my favorites. I have a lot of favorites. <laughs> ADHD. <laughs> Uh, with that, though, we will take this podcast across the multiverse. <gasps> this has been Not So Life from Asteroid G. I'm Mike Finkelstein. I'm not the villain. I'm not going to die. Does that mean I'm the villain? Oh, you don't have to be. I'm Josh Schaefer. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and we will see you next time. <laughs>